I'm sure most of you have seen this structure before, right? It's called a chromosome, which is found in the nucleus of a cell and it carries genetic information of a cell. So let me ask you three real simple questions. Number one, why do we sometimes see chromosomes exist in this form and sometimes in this form inside a cell? Number two, are these two structures even the same? And lastly, what's the difference between sister chromatids and a chromosome? Are they even the same thing? Mm -hmm. If you have trouble answering these three questions, you might want to stick to the end of this video. So the cell division process is actually divided into two stages, karyokinesis, the division of nucleus, and cytokinesis, the division of cytoplasm. This means when a cell divides, the nucleus divides first, followed by the cytoplasm. So our main focus on this video actually is the karyokinesis process, whereby it's divided into the mitosis and the meiosis, which is technically the most important process in this chapter. Before we get into mitosis, you first need to know the cell cycle, which is divided into interphase and emphase. Emphase is technically the cell division phase whereby we mentioned just now the karyokinesis and the cytokinesis takes place. However, before emphase, before cell division can take place, something called interphase has to occur first. Interphase is the preparation phase prior to emphase, which is the phase the cell must go through first before emphase, the cell division can actually occur. So it's basically just like before you go for an exam, you need to prepare to study for that exam. So interface is that so-called preparation phase, the study phase before you sit for an exam, which is that M phase. Now the interface is divided into three phases, G1 phase, S phase, and G2 phase. In G1 phase, you just need to remember GSC, which stands for growth synthesis chromatin. So growth means that the cell actually grows bigger and it starts to synthesize new organelles and proteins. So when the cell eventually divides, it can return back to its original size and the organelles can be evenly split. And for C-chromatin, the chromosomes at this stage are still very extremely fine and are known as chromatin. So you just remember thin. So the chromosomes here are still very thin, like hair like that, and it only will become the thick, thick chromosome that we usually see later on. And next, the S phase. So S phase is actually the most important phase. So what basically happens here is, imagine this person, he wants to split into two. So before he does so, he needs to make sure he has two sets of head, two pairs of hand, two pairs of leg, two sets of everything before he can split. So during S phase, it's just like this person forming these extra heads, these extra hands, and these extra legs. So when I do eventually split, I will retain all the original structure of the person. And that's what actually happens at S phase. Now let's look at the real chromosome structures. Before we start, this is a chromosome. So in human, we actually have 46 of these in each of our nucleus of our cells. So before we start, let's do a bit of labeling first. Now each chromosome has this round thing right at the center, which is actually called the centromere. And each centromere actually have two, what we call as chromatids attached to it. So a chromosome consists of two chromatids attached to a central male. So during S phase, this is what happens. Now inside the chromosome, the DNA undergoes replication, which means the DNA actually makes a copy of itself. Now there's two DNAs inside the chromosome. Once that's happened, chromosome then multiplies into two sister chromatids, whereby you can see right now, both of the DNA that newly form will be now found inside two sister chromatids. So you think about it like this. This is actually one human on the left-hand side. The one on the right-hand side is actually also the one human that we mentioned just now, just that this human now have two heads, two pairs of hands, and two pairs of legs. So which means the one on the left-hand side is considered one chromosome, and the one on the right-hand side is also one chromosome, just that this chromosome have extra sister chromatids. So why are they called sister? Because technically this one on the left hand side and the right hand side are the same. They are a copy of each other. So once you briefly get this, you actually can sort of answer the first three questions that I asked in the beginning of this video. So number one, why sometimes do we see the chromosomes like this inside a cell, sometimes like this? Now, when you see chromosomes in this form, means that that cell is not 
undergoing as phase and is not preparing for cell division. When you see the chromosome in a butterfly shape, it means that this chromosome has undergone as phase and it's preparing to divide. So once I divide later, both of the cell form will become back the original chromosome. Just like how we mentioned just now, when this human split, I will become back into two fully formed human. Without S phase, basically your chromosome will become half and I will, will not retain the original number of chromosome. So therefore remember, if they ever ask what's the importance of S phase, it's actually to retain the diploid chromosome number in the daughter cell. Diploid chromosome number being the full chromosome number. And the next question that I asked just now, are these two structures the same? Well, technically they are the same because they are a copy of each other. But if question asks you to label, they are actually the same thing. If they ask you to label this whole structure, it's called a chromosome. If they ask you this, it's still called a chromosome. We don't have another name for it. Even though this one on the right-hand side is actually a duplicated chromosome. It's a, a chromosome with extra head, hands, and leg, legs, but we uh, don't say that. If they ask you to label like this, then only we say sister chromatids. Okay, and that leads to the third and last question of what is sister chromatids and what's chromosome? This whole thing is a chromosome, this whole thing is a chromosome, but only in butterfly shaped chromosome you will have two sister chromatids. But however, after when they have undergone cell division, the two things that form right now will be called as chromosomes once again. They are not called sister chromatids already because they already split and become back their own cell, their own individual cell. And that is actually S phase law. And the last phase of interface is G2 phase, whereby the cell just accumulates energy and prepares for cell division. So yes, basically when a cell divides, a cell splits, it needs energy. So once that is done, then M phase can then occur, whereby the cell now really starts to split. So as mentioned, karyokinesis is the main process in cell division in M phase we are going to focus on which is divided to mitosis and meiosis. However, in this video, we only will be doing mitosis. Meiosis, I will do a separate part 2 video in the near future. Now, mitosis is basically undergone by all somatic cells in your body. Somatic cells are basically all your body cells excluding gametes which are the sperm and ovum. When mitosis occurs, it will produce two genetically identical daughter cells. Means when a cell splits through mitosis, both of these cells will be exactly the same. So hence the importance of mitosis is just to produce more cells in your body to repair or replace dead cells and also allows growth and development. The whole mitosis process is divided into four phases, which are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, or we usually just call them as the promet. As you can see, the chromosomes at the beginning are in butterfly shape, indicating it has undergone S phase and preparing to divide. And once you finish dividing the chromosomes, you can see it returns back to its original form. There will be three things that we need to know in mitosis. Number one, we need to know how to recognize each phases. Number two, we need to know how to briefly explain each phases. And lastly, we also need to know how to draw each phases, especially metaphase and anaphase. So why not grab a piece of paper and pencil and draw together with me? Lor? So for prophase, you can see that the chromatins that we mentioned in interface just now, the tin tin chromosome has already shortened and thickened to form the chromosomes that we usually see. And now you can see the spindle fiber are formed by the centrioles and this is basically the nucleus. And it's going to temporarily disappear so that the chromosomes inside can split properly. Hence, the nucleolus, which is this black structure, disappears followed by the nuclear membrane, it will disintegrate. Disintegrate means it will break down. And for the drawing part, I always like to start with the centriole. So no matter uh, which phases, I always like to draw the centriole first. So in prophase, the centrioles are basically quite close to each other. So centrioles are basically a pair of cylinder. So we're going to draw two pairs of them quite close to each other. And then the spindle fiber forms in between them. And for the nucleus, before we start drawing nucleus, draw the chromosomes first. So the chromosomes, uh, we're going to draw four of them now. Usually question requires to draw four and always draw two big ones and two small ones. So this is how we're going to draw it. So there are two big ones and two smaller ones. Because chromosomes always come in pairs. Remember, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, but we're only going to draw two pairs here because they're kind of going to draw all 
23 ma. So two different size of chromosome indicating they are two different pairs. And don't forget your central yolks. Now, so this dotted line thingy that I just draw over here is the nuclear membrane, the membrane of the nucleus. Why does it have to be dotted line? Because it's basically breaking down, it's disintegrating already during prophase. And that's how you draw prophase law. Now, a metaphase is the easiest phase to recognize. You can see the chromosomes are all aligned at the center of the cell already, and you can see the nucleus is already completely gone by that. So hence, we say the chromosomes align randomly at the equatorial plane. Equatorial plane is basically the center of the cell. Now, how they move to the center is because of the spindle fibers. They are like the strings that attach to them and pull them. So spindle fibers, you have to say, it attaches to the centrium, the center part of the chromosome. And then basically, they align them at the center. Lo. And by then, you can see the centrioles have already moved to opposite poles means it moved to two opposite sides already. Now you have to use this term opposite pole. You cannot write other words like move to the other side, opposite end. No, only opposite pole can be accepted. And for the drawing part, like I said just now, always start with the centrio. So they already at the opposite poles. So draw two pairs of cylinder. So there are two cylinder, again, one standing up, one lying down, punya cylinder, both at the opposite poles at the other side. Now, for the chromosomes, you're going to draw the same four chromosomes, two big one, and then two slightly smaller one. Just nice. And then spindle fiber, remember, attaches to the centrio, I mean to the centromere, so sorry, to the centromere, the center of the chromosome. Simple as that. This is the easiest phase to draw. Done. And moving on, it's anaphase. So you can see at anaphase, the cell is beginning to separate. The chromosomes, you can see literally, is being cut into half. So how do they actually separate? It's because of the spindle fiber. It's like the string that rips them into half. So the spindle fiber shortens and pulls the sister chromatid to both of the opposite poles. And therefore, sister chromatid separates at the central milk, down right the center of the chromosome. And as you can see over here, right, basically there are four chromosomes going to each of the newly formed cells. Therefore, you can see right, the chromosome number actually remains diploid over here. It means I retain the original chromosome. So basically, the anaphase is like I say just now, I'm cutting this person's head, hands and legs to form two human, two normal human right now. And for the drawing part, once again, two cylinders, two pairs of cylinders at each opposite pole. So we start with the centrioles first. Very simple, only. And then now your chromosomes separate. Now never draw your chromosomes separating like this. Wrong. Now why is it wrong? It's because you have to draw the chromosomes right, uh, as if there is motion. Now what does that mean? So imagine there's a person over here. When you see those kind of cartoon, right? When one person is running in one direction, a, uh, a specific direction, his hair will fly in the opposite direction, correct? So the chromosome that's moving to this side, since I separate, I'm moving to the left side, right? So the chromatids have to bend to the opposite direction. Same with the one that's moving to this direction. The chromatids also have to bend in that direction. So I draw one more, the big one and then two smaller ones. So you have to bend the opposite direction that you're moving. Okay, if I'm going to the left, the chromatids bend to the right. If I'm going to the right, the chromatids bend to the left. And who pull them apart? The spindle fiber, right? The spindle fiber, the one that contract and pulls them. So same thing, you still have to draw the spindle fiber attaching to the centrum here. And that is anaphase, finished. So by the time we reach telophase, you can see that the cell already almost finished splitting. The nucleus actually has already done separating. Right? But you can see the chromosomes already separated. Hence, we say the sister chromatid that separate just now already reached the opposite poles. By the time the sister chromatid reached the opposite poles, now we will call them as daughter chromosomes, means they are now known as their normal name chromosomes already. What happens next is basically the opposite of prophase. Just now prophase, I form spindle fiber. Now spindle fiber have no function anymore. Therefore, spindle fiber disappear. Just now the nucleus disappeared, but now you can see the nucleus forms back. Hence, the nuclear membrane reforms, the nucleus also reappears back. And that is basically telophase already. Lo. After telophase, right, uh, cytokinesis will occur whereby the cytoplasm will actually separate and the cell fully separates. However, we're not going to talk about uh, cytokinesis in this video. Lo. So for the drawing part, same thing, telophase. I'm still going to start with the centrioles. One pair at each of your opposite poles. 
one standing up cylinder, one lying down cylinder. Now, once you're done with that, uh, your chromatids, your sister chromatids has reached the opposite pole. Now they are called chromosomes once again. So for here, you don't have to draw the chromatids bending because I'm already stopped moving. Chromosomes have already stopped moving. Just like if you don't run, your hair don't move. So that's exactly the same over here. So you don't have to draw them bending. Once you're done, the nucleus forms back, right? So the nuclear membrane reforms, same goes to the nucleus. Done. So you just have to do the same thing at the other side. <laughs> I'm lazy to draw, so I'll just copy paste, but it's actually exactly the same thing. Yep. So once that is done, that's basically my thesis law. Therefore, you can see in mitosis, the chromosome behavior is actually the most important thing you must actually know how to explain. Because you can see it from prophase all the way to the end at telophase, the chromosome acts differently. So hence, knowing how to explain the chromosomes, the cystochromatin at each phase is actually key. So once you master that, you should be a pro in mitosis already. Though. So as always, if you still have any doubts or questions, you can DM me at my Instagram or even comment at the comment sections below. Remember, this is Damien Biology, and I'll catch you guys in the next real soon. Bye-bye.